So for me, the key insights of the report are, first of all, that all the countries in the world are absolutely interconnected around the water cycle. There's no one country that's going to solve this on their own. So we need an absolute collective framework, but also a systems analysis. Solutions in one place might cause a problem in another place. Second, water actually runs through all the sustainable development goals. It's not just the ones around water and sanitation or the ones around life below the oceans. Water, if you think about it, is also a key issue for gender parity. Of course, it's related uh, to issues around hunger. Of course, it's related to issues around climate change. So it also becomes an area that we can actually bring all the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, together instead of continue to allow them to be siloed in their own separate uh, spaces. The other uh, interesting insight which we try to bring to the report is that we need an outcomes orientation. We need massive collective intelligence, innovation, collaboration, and investment to the likes of what we saw for the moon landing, where we had 400,000 people together uh, actually making that mission come about. It required direction from government, but huge amounts of experimentation in the business sector. So this report is absolutely for everyone. It's for policymakers and politicians, of course, those are the practitioners on the ground. It's of course for businesses and other types of organizations that are central to the innovation process. And that of course includes also the financing of that innovation. But it's definitely also for local communities and young people. Young people are just as upset about these water challenges that we have, which are increasingly also security challenges, but central to also issues around gender parity. So they need to be at the center of the solutions and the report needs to be able to speak to them as well. Underlying the report, perhaps the most important part of it is the need for new economic thinking. We cannot solve our collective problems if the collective aspect so the commons aspect is just seen in terms of fixing market failures. Even the concept of the public good in economics is still framed within the theory as correcting for a gap that's created by the lack of private sector finance or private sector investment in an area. So the public sector is supposed to fill that gap. We're not gonna solve the water challenges with a filling the gap or market failure uh, view. So we advocate for a market shaping understanding of this problem where we need also to shape the economy to be more inclusive and sustainable and actually design our tools, whether it's procurement, grants, loans, development finance institutions that are outcomes oriented. Uh, to do that, we make use of the concept of mission orientation. Uh, if we think of the, the, the kind of investments that got us you know, to the moon and back in a short amount of time in the 1960s, this is one of the problems with the sustainable development goals. They're incredibly important goals, they're challenges, but we have to transform them into moonshots that bring together many different sectors in the same way that the moon landing wasn't just aerospace. There's no sector that really should be left behind if we think about the different moonshots related to the water challenges we face today. And key to that will be also to design public-private partnerships, which themselves are outcomes oriented. And that means actually bringing conditionality to the table. So it's less about subsidies, guarantees, and de-risking, and actually having that outcomes orientation embedded into the permits, into the intellectual property rights, into the nature of the collaborations. And we need to make sure we're building mutualistic, symbiotic collaborations and ecosystems. So what does a symbiotic, mutualistic ecosystem look like in terms of the financing, in terms of the relationship between public and private actors? The report lays out some answers to that. So if I had to sum up the report, it's that it's a collective call to action on all countries, no one should be left behind, to actually manage the global water cycle as a global common good. This requires market shaping and a massive paradigm shift in water economics. We need to revive the concept of the common good.